This is a Brahma bugger, made almost entirely of feathers, found on a Whiting Farms Brahma hen soft tackle with chickaboo pelt. They're a little more time consuming to tie than a standard woolly bugger, but to me are well worth the effort. For a hook, I'm going to use a size 10, Dairiki number 710 nymph hook. Start by mashing the barb and getting the hook firmly secured in your tying vise. There's no need to worry about bulk on this pattern, so you can use a heavier thread, like UTC 140 in brown olive. Get your thread started on the hook shank, just behind the eye, and take wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. The soft tackle and chickaboo combo is available in a range of colors. For this pattern, I particularly like the golden olive, pale yellow, and the tan. Each skin has enough feathers on it to make dozens and dozens of flies. Here, I'm going to use the golden olive. First, locate the fluffy chickaboo. It's easiest to pull feathers from the skin side. For the tail, pull two feathers free from the skin. Orient them so their backsides are facing and their tips are aligned. Strip the lower off-colored fibers free from the stem. Measure to form a tail about a full hook in length and transfer that measurement rearward to just above the barb. Begin by binding down the stem with wraps of tying thread. Try to keep the feathers roughly on top of the hook shank as you work your way rearward to the bend. End with your tying thread a short distance from the base of the tail. Pick up your tying scissors and then lift the excess butts up and snip them off close. For the rest of the fly, we're going to use feathers from the top soft tackle portion of the pelt. Pull a single feather free from the skin. As you did with the chickaboo, strip the lower irregular fibers off the stem. Reorient the feather and get hold of its very tip so you can pull down the remaining fibers. With just the tip exposed, snip it off to form a small triangle that will act as a tie-in anchor. With the back side of the feather facing away from you, lay the triangle against the near side of the hook shank and take thread wraps to secure it. Advance your tying thread forward to give yourself a little room. Get hold of the stem with hackle pliers and start preening the fibers back and down to gently fold them around the stem. With the fibers pointing roughly rearward, begin making wraps with the soft tackle, preening the fibers rearward as you go. Try to keep the wraps fairly close together. When you get to the bare stem, secure it to the hook shank with several nice tight wraps of tying thread, and then snip the end off close. It's a good idea to take a few more covering wraps to ensure the stem won't work free. Repeat the same feather prep, tie-in, folding, and wrapping sequence several more times, progressing up the hook shank as you go. It may seem slow moving at first, but once you get the hang of it, you can really move right along. When you reach the eye, Tie off the stem with nice tight wraps of tying thread and then snip it off close. Sweep the soft tackle fibers back and build up a small thread head. You can then pick up your whip finish tool and do a five or six turn whip finish before cutting or snipping the thread free. A drop of head cement applied all around to completely cover the thread wraps will ensure nothing comes unraveled. It's actually a fairly durable pattern because the abundance of fibers protects the stems wrapped around the shank. You can add weight to the fly if you like, but I prefer to add it later. Inline weights, like Boss Tin Sticks, work exceptionally well. Just place the desired amount of weight a foot up the tippet from the fly. Give it a little squeeze and it's there to stay. The red mono is just for demonstration purposes. 
With the fly separated from the weight, it's free to move around and to me looks more natural in the water. Tying a non-slip loop knot is also helpful when it comes to letting the fly move freely. If you want to remove the weight, forceps or hemostats with a triangular wedge make the job of freeing it from the tip at a breeze and most of the time allow you to keep and reuse the weight. I believe much of this pattern's appeal comes from the subtle barring in the soft tackle feathers, which make it closely resemble a darter, of which there are about 150 species in North America. Whatever the Brahma bugger looks like, it certainly works. <laughs>